All right, guys, welcome back to the broadcast podcast. With me is my brother at, and partner in crime, Ahmed Bashar. And today we have with us uh, the wonderful Carrie Anthony. Uh, Carrie is a book blogger and a bookstagrammer. Last Ooh. year, she crushed her reading challenge on Goodreads by reading over 50 books. Yes. You can find her on Instagram at shop at myself. Shop myself. Yes. Thank you, for ha- thank you for being with us today, Carrie, from Liverpool, yeah. England. How thank are you? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. When you messaged me, I I I was just like shaking from excitement because this is like the coolest, I, the coolest I thing. I was ever. shaking from excitement when I texted you because we like I said, <laughs> we've been trying to get you on for a while and we just didn't know where to fit it in. And then like when everything just like sort of came through, we were like, Yeah, we gotta get carry on. Oh. Um I've I've been following you on your personal account for a while. We've worked together, we are Ex coworkers, and uh, now seeing you like do your whole bookstagram thing, it's wonderful. I want to get into that. Uh, but what are you doing in Liverpool, Carrie? What, how has life <laughs> taken you from auto from Pickering to Ottawa and then to Liverpool, UK? Yeah, but Liverpool moving to the UK was such a big one for me, but I yeah. think a lot of um. I think North Americans at least really romanticize the United Kingdom, and as soon as the opportunity myself. presented itself, I was like. Okay, yes, easily. Yep. The story is I followed I followed a boy here. Okay. Yes. My fiance is from is from the northwest of England. And oh, he lived great. with me for a couple of years in Canada. So then I figured it was probably time for me to repay the favor and live with him <laughs> for a couple of years here. Do you, do you like it there? Because I remember when we went to the UK last year, it was quite a like it's it's a very different culture and it's very, very yeah. different from the North American way of living. It is really different, but you know what? It's it's kind of a hard question because I got here in October of 2019, which was only a couple of months before the P, the, yeah, P pandemic. Word, the pandemic the P- started. <laughs> and yeah. I, like, I feel like my whole time in this country has just been spent inside of my own house, like not being allowed to do anything. Yeah. It, it's, but what I have seen of the country has been really, really beautiful. And we did get a couple of months of travel in before things yeah. started getting crazy. Did you, I think we talked about it, but did you go up to Scotland yet? Have yes. you gone? Isn't oh. that wonderful? I, I really, I, I was campaigning to live in Glasgow, but I got wow. overruled. <laughs> I, had, I had a friend who lives in Glasgow and I was there for like 10 days and it's, ab- it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Like, it's so, it's and like Glasgow and Edinburgh are as far as like how Pickering and like Mississauga are. That's one of the benefits <laughs> of living like, in the UK. Like everything is just so close by, like all yeah. of Europe. Yes. You can just grab yeah. on a, hop on a train or a plane and just go anywhere. Yeah. And like, and like when we were in London, like just walking around London felt like, I felt like I was like in a Charles Dickens book. Like, obviously it was, it wasn't the same thing. And it's like a very modern portrayal of London, obviously, but it was just like Dickens was here. Shakespeare was here. All these great literary giants lived in on these streets. It was really weird for me. Very surreal. It's weird. Especially like I I'll go walking around my little neighborhood and everything is like older than my country. even is. It's a weird one. That's the thing. The architecture and everything there has a little bit more taste because of how old it is. Like even like the most boring buildings, you'd be like, there's probably history here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful to see. Do you, is it, because when you say Liverpool, I immediately go like Beatles. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say, is it, is it like as huge as I think it is in Liverpool? Is. Like, do they really wear it on their chest? Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. Liverpool is like a very musical city. And pre-pandemic, it's like you go, you walk down Matthew Street, and there's live bands in every single pub. Yeah. There's music. There's people busking on the street. It's oh, yeah. so beautiful. It's a wonderful place if you're an artist. It's just a, a wonderful place to be. It, it, and they've got like Beatles stuff. Everywhere. Everything. Yeah, it's everywhere. everything. <laughs> like if you've been to PEI, you know how it's like Anne of yeah. Green Gables stuff everywhere. Yeah. In Liverpool, it's like that with the Beatles. That's great. So like, how do, when you're in Liverpool, how do you connect to that city now? Like you're such a, you're such a Canadian person, like you're born and bred Canadian and I know it. And then you go to like a, like a foreign country, like, like England. And then how do you, how are you able to connect, make those connections? I find it easier in the cities um, instead of like in the, in like the small countryside place because they're, I don't know, they're a bit more diverse. We lived in London actually for a little bit. Yeah. Um, London, London is scary. If I'm being honest, it gets, it gets a little bit. 
Okay, it's it's kind of <laughs> overwhelming. It's overwhelming. I yeah. think that's that's the thing. It is. It's always hustling and bustling. And if you're yeah. if, like we were there as tourists, but I could only yeah. imagine if I lived there and if I even had like a moment of like calm, it would stress it's me out. It's kind of like the New York of North America. It of, is. Of Europe. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Or you know, London's just the London of London. <laughs> or that or that. That works too. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like the the culture was quite different and like it, London reminded me a lot more of like Karachi like when we lived in Karachi it was like mm-hmm. that and I hadn't lived in like because we live in the suburbs of Pickering and yeah. it's so quiet and you just walk yeah. and you know your neighbors and you know their dog right like it's so it's like a close knit community and then you go to London and everybody's on their own trail yeah it's very busy, overwhelming busy, busy. very busy and it's like people, Toronto like downtown Toronto yeah everyone like the core downtown path. Toronto yeah blinders on yeah so where do you find time to read in all of this like where where are you like i know the whole pandemic like apart from the pandemic you read a lot too like what was your reading challenge of 2019 on goodreads and, and how many did you read in 2019 it wasn't good well was that's it? the thing the pandemic has, has like left life. me what? time to read it was okay i mean it was maybe oh, I, I actually don't know it might have been like 25 books or 30 that's books. not bad so yeah. you're consistently churning out like 20 to 25 a year. Like what is, yeah. how do you do it? What, what are you doing different that we're not doing? Cause you I are finishing them, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Some of them, I, I am a big um, supporter and I, and I will always encourage you to DNF or do not yeah. finish a book yeah. if it's not doing it for you. Cause there's no point wasting your time on yeah. a book that just. Yeah. Life's too short to read different. books that you're not liking. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to touch through them. That's a lesson learned in 2020 for me, but no, I am finishing them. And if I'm, and if I don't finish them, I'm honest about it. Yeah. Um, how do you, how do you go about them? Like 56 is a huge number. Well, working as a bookseller. Yes. Is a good one. Um, so, you, so you're working at a bookstore in, in Liverpool as well? No, I'm not. Cause every, everything's closed. Oh, well, now it's closed, but before the pandemic, like I'm always assuming that we're like pre pandemic or post pandemic. Yeah, I would have loved to, but I, you know, did my bit of traveling yeah. and then the pandemic happened. So I didn't have a job Yeah, and you, there just hasn't been another opportunity because when things opened up for a little window there, they were like, no, we still got employees on furlough. Like we yeah. recognize that you might be a good bookseller, but we literally don't have a job to offer you. So I'm yeah. just, I don't know. I'm just rocking and rolling. I'm just rolling with the punch. So then like, now, now when you're not working, you find all this free time. Yeah. And you invested in books. Yeah. So now I have the excuse of, well, I'm not doing anything else. We're in a national lockdown. We've been in a national lockdown for a long time. Let me read a bunch of books. And before we were in lockdown, it was, I was a bookseller. Yeah. Um, So it was kind of my, it's it's my job to read a lot of books. And if I don't read a lot of books, pretend that I've read them and talk to people about, oh, this great book that I read that I totally haven't. (laughs) <laughs> so do, what does your reading like schedule look like do you like do you read in the morning are you a night reader are I'm you a night like reader. you're a night reader so like you can't read in the morning or you just don't I can but then I do you know when you pick up your book when you're in in bed in the morning and then you don't get out of bed until noon yeah. <laughs> because you don't want to put your book down yeah but I'm uh, <laughs> yeah I, I'm a night reader I like to go I'm like so not a night owl so I like to go to bed early and yeah. then just read um uh, and then I listen to audiobooks throughout my day okay so see that, that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about so yeah. there's like a big debate among like at least the book community that yeah. like some people look down upon audiobooks I know I'm not one of them I think they're amazing if you yeah. can go like okay if you're talking about that some people also look down upon the whole idea of the kindle and going through yes. your blog, I noticed that you have a lot of physical books. Yeah. Uh, so how do you go about doing that? Like, do you, have you ever thought about investing in a Kindle? He just I'm, got me one and sure you have it's a been like life changing. I can oh, bet money that yeah. you have a Kindle. I, I don't have a Kindle. Oh my God. I just lost money. <laughs> Why don't but you have, have a Kindle? Phone, but I don't have like a Kindle Kindle and I don't have the Kindle app or anything. I, I'm... It's my New Year's resolution to do an Amazon ban for the year. Uh, 2021. Yes. So no Google, no Goodreads, which is really bad. Yeah. Oh, but that's going to hurt. I replaced it with an app called um, Storygraph, which is new and owned by a black woman who's from the UK and in my opinion. better. Sorry, what was it again? Story? Storygraph. Storygraph. Okay, I'll link it in the bio. Uh, 
Look it up. Yeah. So no Kindle, no Kobos, no e-readers at all. Old school. I want the book in my hand. I want to feel the papers. I want to flip yeah. through them. Smell and then the I also, I also have an app um, called Libby that where you can um, take out audiobooks and eBooks if you want from yeah. the library. It's amazing. So, but no, when, yeah, I'm going analog. I'm trying to go more analog this year. Are you a paperback person or a hardback person? Both. I like hardbacks. Right? Hardbacks uh, are underrated. People like shit yeah. on them way too much. Like, okay, yeah, They're you can. Bend. They are expensive. Like books have gotten ex- astronomically expensive. Like even like four years yeah. ago, uh, the average price of a book was around 22 to $25. Like I'm going to yeah. stick in dollars right now. And then yeah. now it's gone up to like 30, 35. Like I bought Obama's book and it, I caught oh. it maybe $45 for that. Yeah, I know. I remember when I was working in, in like Indigo, yeah, yeah. Um, and we were stocking like the new Stephen King book. The price was like $43. And I just insane. Stephen King <laughs> makes money on the hardbacks. Like those sell. Cause people will buy them when they first come out. Like it's yeah. not like his, his fan base does aren't the, the kind of people that will just wait for the paperback. Like yeah, they'll sell true. on the hardcover. And they go like, you like you said, they go analog and like, they don't go for the Kindle or the audio book. They go straight for yeah. the hardback. That's crazy to me. Like, like when we used to work at Kohl's and like, people would come and buy it in like bulk. Like we would restock them and then they'd be gone in like a week and then we'd restock yeah. them. Yeah. It's crazy. His, his fan base is, is insane. Crazy. It's good though, because people are uh, building libraries with them, which I think are so beautiful and their homes yeah. are like passing them on to people. I, since I am not working in bookstores anymore, I've discovered the library. Love the yeah. library. <laughs> and Great place. Thrifting, thrifting for books is the most underrated hobby. I love you can it. find so many gems that are pre-loved and it's more sustainable and it's cheaper and yep. everything. There's absolutely no reason. What do you do with all the physical books that you have? I keep them. I hoard them. <laughs> yeah, same, same. I have, um, I have one shelf, one library shelf that I have in my room. That's full. I was like, like, yeah. like throwing up <laughs> and I need a new if one. There's now. ever an earthquake. It's all falling on top of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally. It's like that. But, my, uh, one of my biggest regrets in my life was um, I had an enormous, well, not enormous, but you know, for a 20, early 20 year old, yeah. I had an enormous library, an enormous collection of books. And then when I moved to the UK, I sold them all yeah. to like my friends and fellow books for like really like $5 for a hard, yeah. for a hardback, $3 for a paperback, because I wanted them to go to good homes and people yes. that would appreciate them and take care of them. And now I'm like, oh, I wish I had kept them. It, it takes, I have a lot of unread ones too. It, and, it takes years to build this library. Like I, mine took like five or six years. And I think I'm now my bookshelf is to the point where I'm like, I think I need another one. But like, again, like I, I can only imagine it's like literally like saying goodbye to your babies. Cause you have these, these books that you've had for so long yeah. and then you develop like this emotional re- relationship to them. Like, you know, where you dog ear the pages and, and this is the part where I cry or this is the part yeah. where it got boring. Like, you know, all of those spaces in the books. And then when you have to let them go, it's like, ugh, how do I'll I do never that? do it again. It, it's my biggest regret in my whole life. Selling off. My take, them, take them with you wherever you go. Yeah. Uh, anyone who bought a book from me, please give it back. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you're a night reader, right? How, how do you end up reading 56 though? Is it like consistently? Are you, yeah, are you on night your phone reader before you sleep? Reader. Sorry, say that again. I'm an, sorry. I'm a, a night reader and a weekend reader. And, okay. and again, and audiobooks, audio, like I've replaced for the most part. I used to watch a lot of, a lot of YouTube. Same. Um, I'm addicted. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't, obviously I haven't completely replaced my YouTube consumption with audiobooks, but I've replaced a lot of it with audiobooks. Yeah. And I generally, um, will, will do nonfiction. On yes. Audiobooks. I so think nonfiction feels, is a lot easier yeah, with audiobooks. Yeah. That way I feel like I'm actually learning something instead of just like, you know, some murder mystery on an audio, yeah. which of course is fine to listen to, but. So when you're listening to audiobooks, are you like actively sitting and listening or are you doing something else? Usually I'm watercoloring oh. <laughs> or doing a puzzle or because I'm a fidgeter. I always need something to do with my hands yeah. or cooking or commuting or anything. They're, they're pretty much always on because I just need something on. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's also true. Like I, for me, like I love it when I'm like driving. Like yeah. I have an audiobook on and I would treat an audiobook like a, an episode of a podcast. So like if, yeah. if the chapter is like 35 minutes long, then I'll just, I'll go for a coffee and I'll drive around for a bit. And then the chapter will end and I'll be like, well, that was a great chapter. And I'll come back mm-hmm. home. Like that's mm-hmm. what I've been doing for the past month. And I've gotten through books and, and audiobooks and sorry, audiobooks and podcasts like that. And it's just so therapeutic. Like yeah. if you just like drive around, your mind wanders, but it's because it's muscle memory. So you're not really in harm. <laughs> you're doing yeah. something uh, that's making you go to point A to point B. And that's why I miss going to university. Like the mm-hmm. act of like walking to the bus bus stop and with your podcast on and then like waiting for the bus and then taking the bus. Like that whole act would like, it was very mundane, but then I was getting a lot of like audiobooks in and and podcasts and, and I kind of miss that now like it's nice I to have the routine as well yeah and the number one thing that hit like the pandemic I thought when the pandemic started because we didn't know if we were going to go back to school or to work in the foreseeable future I was like man I'm gonna get so many books in like I'm gonna read like a hundred yeah <laughs> and I didn't how many did you get to I got to about 20 and I say nice. about 20 well, 20 is okay. My goal what was, was my goal actually for this year or for you, last year. You crushed your goal. Like I saw, I saw the reading challenge and I saw <laughs> what you did and I was like, no way. That's insane. <laughs> oh, thank my, you. Mine was 40. I, I wanted to do a book a week, but I was like, yeah. okay, like, go easy on yourself. Let's do 40. And I did half of it. So I'm not terribly upset about myself, but thought mm-hmm. I could do better. Mm-hmm. Are you also, are you reading multiple books at the same time? Um, yeah. Is that how you go about it? I usually, I never used to be able to, Um, but now in the last couple of months, I started having one fiction and one nonfiction on the go at the same time. Yeah, that's what I do too. So I don't get things too confused because if I've got two fictions, even if they're like different genres, I'm going to find, I just know I'm going to confuse the characters or get some of the plot mixed up or something. Um, But no, I can manage one nonfiction on audiobook and then one fiction as a novel. Yeah. Or I have like a phys- if I was gifted a physical copy of a memoir or something that I could get um, a fiction. I'm really over explaining this, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I totally get it. That's what I do as well. You know like, what I, I mean. <laughs> I, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I would read like a fiction, like a memoir at one point, and then I'd read a nonfiction yeah. on the other side. Yeah. I think that it balances out. Exactly. Um, um, yeah, that's how I do so, it. And also a trick to reading, getting that stat up higher and higher is I went to school for theater. I went to university for theater. So I read a lot of plays, which are very, very, very short reads. You can read them most of the time. I mean, I think generally you can read plays in one sitting. Yeah. Um, so that helps too. trick of the trick. Do you think, do you think when you pursued, um, when you went to school for theater, uh, like Mm -hmm. the whole arts really like developed your love for reading and more because, um, I'm a very firm believer that if, the only reason people don't like Shakespeare is because they haven't had teachers good enough to teach them. Yeah. And uh, that was my case for all of high school until I got Miss Lewis in high school. And mm-hmm. she went through Hamlet. Like she knew it from like the back of her hand. She mm-hmm. loves that play. And Hamlet then because is- she loved it so passionately, I loved it. Yeah. And I like understood the, the deep like understanding of, of Shakespeare after that. Yeah. And do you yeah. think like once you went into theater and like you went, deep into these plays and, and, and these stories uh, that develop more of a love for you for books? Yeah, I think it, for me, instead of it coming from a specific teacher or a moment in school, it came from going into a theater and then watching people perform it. Yeah. Because uh, then when you read plays, you can visualize it in your mind a lot better. Like if you're reading Hamlet for the first time and you've never seen a play, it's hard. It's hard to keep all the characters straight. And there's no, there's nothing there to help you out. It's just dialogue and dialogue and dialogue and dialogue and dialogue and and nothing else. Yep. And Um, then like you're confused with the aside and the dialogue itself doesn't like help itself. It's quite dense. Yeah. So you're just Uh, like lost most of the time. And most of the teachers that I had uh, that taught me Shakespeare were just like going through it. Like, and then that's not how you do it. You really got to like, bring it to life basically yeah you do have to have a, a teacher that um cares about what they're doing for me also it was it miss carr 
who yeah. made us read it aloud. She made people in the class uh, pick characters and yeah, we had to read it aloud. Yeah. And it was terrible because we were in high school and couldn't read in pentameter and it yep. was difficult language, but we got through it and yep. it made it a lot better for the people that were hearing or that were reading along because they were, they could listen to it. Yep. So it's easier yep. to follow. It is. It is. Some of the teachers would also like put up like the play on the TV and then we'd read it through, like mm. follow it with, with the thing that also helped. I mean, like after high school, I sort of like went back and reread some of the stuff that we read in high school, like Merchant of yep. Venice and uh, Romeo and Juliet. And I had a more like deeper appreciation from it for it because of like a good teacher like Miss Lewis who went through Hamlet like the way she did. And then when I went back and read Merchant of Venice and all of these things, I found uh, things that I was missing or was too arrogant at the time to like be like, oh, this has value in it. And yeah. I was so lucky to do that because then I got so many different like a lot of modern language is based on Shakespeare. And when you go back and read it, you're like, Oh, we use that now. And it's just, it was very nice to like rediscover, I guess what I was missing. Yeah. And that's why I always felt like I kind of like should have gone for a liberal arts degree. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I missed out on that because oh. I, my brain works in literally in words like that and not as much as um in numbers. So I don't know what I'm doing with a marketing degree. <laughs> But here we are. <laughs> but here we are. You've got here a podcast, so. <laughs> it's good. It's how I get my creativity out. Um, Earlier yeah. you touched based on the fact that you're trying to replace your YouTube consumption with mm -hmm. re reading more books. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we're in this age of media that, like, in terms of the book community, yeah. do you guys find it growing or decreasing with the forms of other media or entertainment that's that's there people are watching more videos than than reading more books or they want to do, like for me i feel like because i'm not that big of an avid book reader yes I, we have a non-reader among us that's me um i would like rather watch a summary of a book done by one of my youtubers oh my and actually read the book <laughs> so what are your thoughts on that and Carrie, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you take this one <laughs> i don't believe in non-readers you know same i think that everyone is a reader you just haven't found the right book exactly um, i completely wholeheartedly believe in that yeah. cool. that's a quote that's a cool. i think that's jk rowling i think she said that oh and, for real yeah yeah so like i think she said something like um if someone doesn't like to read they haven't found the right book something along those lines so, yeah. oh. anthony, so jk rowling carrie anthony yeah exactly like mike scott, like a michael Wayne scott yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly can um, you tell that in preparation i watched your michael scott episode earlier today yeah or your <laughs> office episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> we we love the office here like we it's, oh. that's the show that's always on in the background yeah. like that's just it's a amazing. great well written well acted show we love I'll it. never get tired of it no nope, never <laughs> and, but uh, coming back uh, to your point, um, so he graduated university uh, this December. And so when he graduated, I, I got him a Kindle and I said, congratulations on your undergrad. Now your real education begins. And I like had like a few oh, books. Very profound. Right. I thought I said it specifically <laughs> deep in. because I knew Carrie was coming on in like a week and I was like, I'm going to bring it. <laughs> you should have got it engraved in the back of the reader. <laughs> But like, I really wanted him to start reading more because I feel like if you, in this day and age, if you're not reading, you're really like pushing yourself against the wall because every, with, there's so much information out here and the best way to consume it is literally books. There's no other way. It's the longest medium of entertainment. Mm. Uh, sorry, the oldest medium in entertainment and there's value in it. And he yeah. was always under the impression like, I'm not a reader. I don't really like it. I don't, I can't get into it. And now I just, I never felt that I had the temperament to sit down and open a book and just read it on my own time. Right. I would be like, man, I could be doing this. I could be doing that. What do you but, say about that, Carrie? Yeah. Like that, that's, is that, what is that? And there's a like, lot of people like me out there. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. And that's fair enough. But I do, I do stand by that. You just haven't found the right book. Maybe you need something that has a faster pace. Um, if you, you know, like can't like can't be asked to sit down and read a physical book. Maybe you need something that's a bit faster in pace. Or you could try have you tried audiobooks? I have I mean I'm I listen to a lot of podcasts. So audiobooks I found that they're just a bit slightly harder to keep track of because I can zone out pretty mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. Um fair enough. So it's, I feel like it's an attention span thing for you. Could be. Are you on TikTok? No. Okay. See <laughs> I have a theory that um because TikTok is like the biggest thing ever in the world, right? 
Mm. Um, people are more in because it's micro bursts of like dopamine releases in your head. It's five seconds, 10 seconds, and then you get the resolution. It's like set up punchline, set up punchline. It's very yeah. immediate. So pe- the more people in- involve themselves in like micro bursts of dopamine hits like that, the less it becomes enjoyable for reading something that's long form, like books yeah. or, or podcasts, like they're long form entertainment, which, which d- demand your attention, right? You need to be present for them to work. Or if you're not, then they don't work. That that's sense. why. I'm against TikTok. (laughs) Yeah, I've never thought about I've never thought about it that way, but that's a really good point. Like you're training your brain to consume a certain form of content. Yeah. And if you do that so repetitively, so so repetitively, then it's it's gonna be permanent damage. Like we've got to be your brain. It's gonna be a sludge of of dopamine hits and you want it in the microbursts. No, you're here. You're good. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. Can you see us? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I was just saying that like, it'll be like, uh, yeah, if you, your brain will turn into sludge and it'll be like micro bursts of dopamine hits and that's what it will need all the times. That's why like, like even with YouTube videos, like I'm a bit, I watch a lot of YouTube as well, but those videos tend to go from somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes and I can mm-hmm. manage that. But mm-hmm. like anything that's like 10 seconds of that, like imagine a 15 minute video condensed into 10 seconds. If I'm yeah. getting, if I'm finding value in that, why would I go and sit through 15 minutes of it? Yeah. That's the struggle I have with my friends. Yeah. They're like really into the whole TikTok thing. And I'm like, I don't get it. I found with, with sex started to read books. Um, I found that I have a, like, I'm like, I want to read books that are of interest to me. So like currently ever since you got me the Kindle, I've been reading like a couple of books at the same time. So one of them was like a self-help book, which I found is helping me a lot. It's Atomic Habits by James Clear. <gasps> Um, I, and, I just got that on audiobook from the library. So people talk about life-changing books. That book yeah. is life-changing. Okay. Really? Oh, um, and then <laughs> I'm also reading the classic Harry Potter books. So, and I'm just like, last night I was reading and it was, it's a page turner. I couldn't stop. And <laughs> I'm starting to feel like I'm developing that habit of reading. And like, it's like, like what you were saying, uh, a before bedtime thing. So mm-hmm. Yeah, people should try that if you're not into books. Like, I'm so giddy that he just said that because I have, we've had dinner table arguments on this and like our parents would be on both sides and be like, no, it's okay. Let him do what he wants. I'm like, no, he needs to read. What is he going to do out in the world? What if someone makes a Hamlet reference? He won't get it. Yeah. Oh, man. No, that's good. I think that's great. I think it is about um, creating a routine. Well, finding the right genre. Yeah. Finding the right format. And then building it into your routine like if it's just if it's like an hour at night before bed then that's perfect because then it's mm-hmm. not such a big chunk of time that it's going to you know take a lot out of your day yeah um, it's just a nice routine to get in why do you think reading is important it just is i don't know i was i was thinking about this earlier like, why is reading important i don't know it makes it makes your brain feel good you learn things yeah you I don't know. Like, I know it's such a, you you think it'll be a simple question, but it's really quite hard to answer because like everybody gets something different out of it. Reading is important. I think certainly for children, um, working at Indigo and working as a part of the love of reading foundation was a big, a big, big, big moment in my life. Um, that taught me about the importance of literacy in children as an adult. Yeah, of course, reading is important, but I can't really tell you why. I don't know. I don't know. That's too hard of a question. <laughs> <laughs> I have no credibility. To Why is reading important? I want, I want, I want to see what yeah, you think. I have no credibility, but I will still no, answer go the ahead, question. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> I feel like, so ever since that I've been over, like every time that I have read, it's it kind of like, it feels it's, it's peace. Like I put my phone away for an hour. There's no distractions. The lights are off. Just like the lamp is on and it's just me and the book. So it's just a a deep connection that I have with the book and it's teaching me something and I'm taking something away from it. And when you're reading like classics, it's like this book has gone through so many phases. Like this is somebody's life's work. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's quality art that you're consuming. Yeah. It's, it's, um, earned wisdom as opposed to received wisdom. It's what I think. Like you have, 
You, hey, we we rehearsed. <laughs> this is a much better answer than it makes your brain feel good. <laughs> it, it, but that's exactly what we're coming to, right? Like it's literally that. Like it's after you go through a book, even if you let's say you were struggling through it, when you finish it, you've you're not the person you were when you started it. Yeah. Because and when you end it, even if you didn't feel good, let's say it was a horrible read, you learn something from it. This yeah. is you just learn something that you don't like. Okay, I don't like this exactly. type of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think there's, there's value, value in, in every that. book. I totally agree with that. Have you ever read Haruki Murakami? I read Norwegian Wood when... Can we talk about that for one second? Just stay here I, for a minute. I am so embarrassed that no, I... No, 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 no. I think, I think you and I are on the same page on that. Did you like it? I liked it when I read it, but I literally couldn't tell you what it's about. I need I, to reread it. That, that's <laughs> one of my DNF books. Oh, really? I could not get through it. I was so excited. My friend yeah. gifted it to me in Glasgow. I started it in Glasgow. It had such a strong opening. And then it went nowhere for like 200 pages. Mm. <laughs> you might want to try one of his like more like Murakami, Murakami books. Because Norwegian was very tame for him, isn't it? Is it? Because I was yeah. like, what is yeah. happening? She's yeah, a 40 year old woman. It <laughs> is. 12 year old is, is coercing her into okay. sex. <laughs> Stay here for a minute. Like she, she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm like, well, um, and then and then I read the reviews because I was like, am I getting something? Am I doing it wrong? And yeah. and people were like, it was either like it's the best thing ever, or I don't, I couldn't get into it. And I was it's more like in the marmite of the book world. Yeah, like it's supposed to be like Japan's Great Gatsby or something. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna have to do a reread of that at some point because I especially now that I live in Liverpool at, yeah. at the Beatles. Yeah. Um but I yeah, no, I mostly blocked it out, mostly I think probably because it made me feel a bit dumb, like I didn't understand what was going on. But I think perhaps if you read something that was more like very, very Murakami, like Kafka on the shore. Yeah. Or no, Kafka on the Shore is probably a good one. That's like really eclectic and strange. Yeah. It might be better because you're getting like a full-blown Murakami at that point where Norwegian Wood is kind of watered down Murakami. Okay. I, I, I want to give it another shot because <laughs> in the book community, he's like hailed as like this, the yeah. second coming of, I don't know, like J.D. JD Salinger or something. Like he's just like yeah. the thing. No, I'm serious. Like I, I was kind of scared on Twitter to be like, I didn't, I didn't like Norwegian wood and the backlash that I would get, I was already scared of that. So I didn't say anything. Yeah. This is the yeah. first time I'm coming out and being like, yeah. guys, I, I don't think I liked it that much. Yeah. I left, I couldn't finish it. I think I'm, I think I might've been a bit too young when I tried to read it because yeah, I, how old were you? I have a life experience. I was, I read it my first year working on Coles. So I was probably 18. Yeah. Maybe you were a bit too young. I didn't have the life experience to, understand yeah. what the heck was going on or read a you know translated fiction by a Japanese author and to understand what that meant in context and yeah have you read a lot of translated works because I'm a big fan of like uh Frederick Bachman I think he's amazing uh, and his translations are really good yeah I, I, I have. <laughs> you have to check it out like you have to check out Bear Town you have to check out a man called oh a man called Ove will like make you weep but in like the most amazing way is Bear Town about hockey? Is it about like a town? Yeah. Am I going crazy or is it about a town in Canada and about hockey? Yeah, it is 100%. Okay. Oh, yeah. but it's translated. It is translated. So he's, um, uh, what is he, Norwegian, I think? No, he's Swedish. I think he's Swedish. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he writes in, in Swedish and um, it's always translated. He has this one translator that does her work, does his work. And it's just, it's amazing. He, he is one of my, one of the authors that I really, really would like to read. I just haven't had, haven't had the chance yet. Who are some of your favorite authors that you just, you, if you hear that they have a book out that you just blindfoldly go into it and be like, okay, this is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> <laughs> um, a great discovery that I made in 2020, I read two of her books was Donna Tart. Oh, The Goldfinch. The Goldfinch. Yeah. I haven't read it. I, ha I own it, but tell me all about it. It's really long <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's like, I, I posted on my, before I started my bookstagram, I posted it on my book, on my personal Instagram because I just had to commemorate that I finished this 850 page book. It's huge. Uh, 
And I said, this book felt like running a marathon and finishing it felt like finishing a marathon. Like it was hard and long, but so it felt so rewarding. Um, Was, was the story there? Like was the story worth it there? Yeah. 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 It, it, I, I, I star rank my books. It would have been five stars. I gave it four and a half because it was longer than it needed to be. Yeah. But it is, if you have the time and do read it, it's really good. Also, The Secret History is great. Um, yeah, she's just a really fantastic writer. So she has another book that I haven't read, which I'll, I hope I'll get to this year. Um, and then another author that I'm anticipating a new book from is Mona Awad. I haven't you know heard her? She that. wrote Bunny. Um, which was like a weird thriller, confusing, strange, 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 weird book. And she's got a new book coming out this year called All's Well. Yeah. Which I think is a reference to All's Well That Ends Well. I think so. Sure. Um, so that will be cool. Have uh, you ever tried? I'm not um, an author kind of person. I, I, I kind of, I, working at a bookstore taught me to try and read as widely as I could. Yeah. And not stick to one thing. Although I'm not sure if it's the best for me, it's like quantity over quality instead of. Yeah. Like no, but cream. because that's your job. Like I, I totally see how that's important. Like you need to read, you need to read to know what's good and what not, what's not. Yeah. Like you want to recommend with your heart and not with your brain. And I want to recommend to a lot of different people instead of just one very specific group of people. Yep. Yep. Did you ever, have you ever tried writing? Are you a writer as well? <laughs> um, no, I, I would like to be a writer. Because I just the amount of books you consume, <laughs> I mean, the amount of books you consume, like that's the amount of books a writer needs to consume. Like mm-hmm. 50 books. Stephen King reads anywhere between 80 to 100 a year. That's right? unbelievable. And, and he, so he finds time to write all of those books. And then he, exactly, he has two out a year for like the past 20, 30 years. But, yeah. but the thing is like for, for writers, at least like the amount of books that you read or like someone like a Stephen King reads it's that's mm-hmm. like them working out. And then when they're writing, that's like them, like in a, in a battle, in a, in a performing. fist fight. Yeah. Performing. And, yeah. and I'm just like curious, have you ever tried to write? I like, um, I like journaling. I like, yeah. you know, writing and reflecting on my own personal thoughts, writing, like a novel has never been something that's really been on my radar. Yeah. If I were to write something. Yeah. Yeah. If I were to write something, it would probably be like, maybe like a memoir type thing. Yeah. I'd be interested in that. Yeah. Like not, not necessarily about my whole life because I'm not really that interesting as a a person, but I I would disagree. I think we would disagree. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Maybe some, I always thought if I were to write a book, it might be like something that's kind of like a coffee table book uh, with like cool illustrations and recipes or whatever, but yeah. chronicling you know, my time as a bookseller or my time yeah. living in the UK or whatever. Um, but you do, you do write your reviews for your bookstagram. Yeah, I do. That's writing. What are I, your, your goals so, with your so, bookstagram? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? What are your goals with your books? What are you trying to do? What's, what's the message that you're trying to put out? I want to build a community of like-minded people. Yeah. I want to have a place where I can talk about books and be excited about books and recommend books yep. uh, with people who like the same things as me, who have similar values to me. Yep. Uh, it's, for me, it's about meeting people and community. Community yeah. is the number one thing for me, really. I'm not like trying to get like a following or... But you're getting there. <laughs> sponsorships or whatever. I just want to connect with people, really. Right. Have, um, you, have you thought about a starting a booktube channel? I have. I would watch it. I do like summaries of books and that's would be my, that would be my <laughs> consumption. I do love, I do love booktube. Uh, I just, I don't know. I think I need, I would be keen to do it, but I think I need to work up my confidence a little bit more before. Sure. Like take your time. I I started a sort of a writer to booktube thing. Yes. And 
And it, like the first few videos, I still watch them. They, they sucked so bad. I was so <laughs> underconfident. I didn't have a script in front of me. I didn't know what I was talking about. I was just blabbering on. And then like, it took me like 10, 15 videos to like sort of concise it's what, it's like what you were saying yeah. with, with books. It's about quantity and then quality yeah. comes with it. Especially with YouTube. If you want to just, start it, you got to turn yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah. I've, I think I've, I'd be very interested in like, if you just did like reviews of the books you read, I think I'd watch that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thanks. It might be something, it might be something that I'd work on. Especially but. because the booktube community is, it's so, um, involved in like the YA sci-fi genre that not a lot yeah. of people le- read literary fiction. Yeah. And, it, and yeah, those I, who do, their reviews aren't that good. <laughs> to be honest. Or they're amazing and there's only one or two of them. Yeah. Yes. And you know, you don't have any really like any diversity in, in opinion there. Yep. And so as being your pseudo marketing manager, I would say that's an untapped, <laughs> unsaturated uh, market <laughs> that you should definitely get into. Cause I think you'd be good at it. Well, maybe I'll try it out. I think you should. <laughs> what are your uh, messages? What, what, what would be the message for someone who is listening to this podcast, who is kind of interested in us, but not really into reading? What would you tell them? Interested in us. Like, like, like you're think. listening to us, but then they're not really into the whole reading oh. thing, like a mutual friend or, or someone who's just on this by accident and they've come to this well, part. Yeah. Um, just do it. Like, just, just do it. Just do it. Like <laughs> you're, do. you're depriving yourself of so much joy yeah. and so much happiness by saying, no offense, you know, I'm not a reader. I don't read books. It's not for <laughs> me. Just like do it. Just find something that you like, yes. even if it's a book that you How does one go about exploring? Like, what do they do? Do they go to the bookstore and ask? <laughs> Would you recommend books to like start off with like beginner books or things that you I think it depends on what I I would but it it would depend on like what kind of genres that you like Mm -hmm. as far as like books that had an impact on me um non-fictions are when breath becomes air which is a medical memoir yes um I remember when we worked at Kohl's you recommended that to a lot of people yeah yeah it's so good I read it in one sitting (laughs) (laughs) it was amazing um educated by Tara Westover, yep. which is also amazing. Novels go with Homegoing by Ya Kiasi. It's like um, a multi-generational um, family story, historical fiction. Okay, it's cool. I usually go with like, have you read Life of Pi? <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. Life of Pi. I read that. Thank you for that recommendation because you're the one that always bangs on about it. And then I picked it up last it's year. So and good. Stars. It's amazing. It's so good. And then it's like a great one. That's so good. And I, I had like the privilege to meet Jan Martel and like I sat with him and I was like, dude, what did you do to my life? Yeah. <laughs> completely changed it. And like oh, that God. was the first time I ever met a real author who had like sold like a million plus books and had a movie on it. had had a movie on it and had like these Oscar nods and everything. And I was sitting with him and it was just him and I on a table and we talked for like half an hour Yeah. and about life of Pi, about Richard Parker, about symbolism, about writing, about he was in India when he wrote it. So like that, like we had like a cultural thing going on as well. And then I was just like, man, I think you changed my life. And mm-hmm. then I, when I wrote my poetry book, I sent it to him. And he wrote me back. Oh, that's amazing. That's like the, my, one of my most cherished stories is that like when I, yeah. I was so kind of insecure about my poetry and then I was yeah. like, you know what? I'll just send it off on a whim. Let's see if he hates it. I'll never hear about it. But if he likes yeah. it, maybe he'll say something. And then like a month later, I got like a posted, like a note, like a postcard. And I was like, oh my God. That is so amazing. And then that's yeah, also that's my good. bias with Life of Fire. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, people need to read it. It's so good. Yeah. yeah, it is awesome. It's a really great book. Um, Yeah, what a great, great, great. That's a great starting place. I yeah. remember I read the, I, I think it was the author's note at the yeah. very beginning of the book before the novel starts, yeah. which I don't normally read. I usually will start the book and then I'll go back and read the author's, whatever they have to say. Yeah. But I was like, it's pretty long. His author's yeah. note. It's not, yeah. it's more than just a couple of sentences. He likes to talk. <laughs> You no, know, I read that book in grade 12. So they're, they're teaching that book in English class now, which is great. Are they? Yeah. Oh, great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Such an amazing story. Um, 
I, so I read the author's note and then I was like, okay, this is already amazing. So then I sat and I sat my fiance in front of me and I was like, okay, I'm just going to read this author's note aloud to you. Yeah. <laughs> I read the whole thing to him because I was blown away by the writing and we hadn't even gotten into the book. book the book, yet. book. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also have this weird thing where I love reading to people. Yeah. Like if I have a friend over, I'd be like, yo, you check this passage out. And I go on for like 20 pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're so nice. Just like, just, just waiting for me to finish. Cause yeah. they might be interested, but not that interested. Mm-hmm. And like my passions really show in my face. Like when I'm really passionate about something, I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. Everybody should love this. Yeah. And that's how I felt about Life of Pi. It's nice to share that with someone to have that shared experience because most of the time reading is kind of like an isolating activity. Very much, very much. Uh, which is why for me it's so important, so important for me to go on my bookstagram every day or yeah. have people that will talk to books with me. <laughs> I, I love your bookstagram, especially like aesthetically yeah. speaking as a, as a photographer. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think the consistency and the tones are just amazing. I don't know if you're slapping a filter or if you're actually sitting down and editing them, but they're amazing. And I, oh, okay. I recommended your page to some of my other like book lover friends and they love it too. So, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> we're, we're, we're helping you grow and not yeah. just only in Canada. Like my friends in Karachi are like, she's so good. She reads like these eclectic tastes and all oh, these things. And I'm like, yeah, go follow so her. She's nice. great. Oh, so they're going to be ecstatic that we ha- finally had you on the pod. Oh, so happy. I can't wait to tell everyone about this. <laughs> Carrie, I'm just going to add like one yeah. last thing when you talk to like as a non reader, um, what worked for me when you were t- trying to like get me into the whole reading habit was that video you showed me. Yes. So what's the, it's called bookstores. Have you seen that? Um, it's Max Joseph's video. It's called bookstores. Have you seen it? Hang on. I'm going to look it up. It's, it's oh. so good. The, the it's gist a documentary. Of that video was basically we're all on this earth for a finite amount of years and we can only read uh, so many books. a limited amount of books every year. Yeah. So if you try, like, try to like plan out your life as to when you're going to die and then the amount yeah. of books that you're going to read or not going to read because you're not reading, that really made me sit down and be like, okay, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I need yeah. to read books and consume yeah. this art. Yes, that is, that is a great show. I did watch that. Um, I did watch that video. It's it's very good. Like that when people are like, oh, I don't have the time to read or whatever. I just recommend the first 10 minutes of that episode. Yeah. It's and a I'm scare like, tactic. It works. It is a scare tactic. Like <laughs> he's literally sitting you down. He's showing you how many books you'd read on a shelf. And it's just like one, one shelf. He's like, this is all you're going to read in your entire your life. Entire life, Yeah. And like you have, as, as, every time I watch it, I have that existential dread. I'm like, oh my God, is that me? <laughs> I don't want to be that person. Yeah. And I, I find myself reading. Oh okay. yeah. That's, that is such, that is a very, very good shout. And then like the bookstores that he visits are just, so, I want to go to all of them. Have you gone to, and this, I'll finish on this cause we can ramble on about books for like, an hour <laughs> and a half. but have you gone to Daunt books in London? No. That's one of the most magical places ever. I know. I know. It's so I beautiful. I've walked past it. Oh, um, you have to go inside. You I actually have to go inside. And if you if you're a fan of like romantic comedies like I am, then like that's the whole Notting Hill bookstore. And is that where it was set? That's the Notting Hill bookstore. Yeah. Oh, is it really? Yeah. It's it's oh, very nice. cute. It's very like beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Oh, great. Yeah. When oh, life gets back to normal, I you, sh- you have to check them out. Yeah. Hopefully soon. <laughs> How bad is it in in the UK? Is it really bad? Well, we're in another national lockdown now. Same. Uh, is it because of the, the, the new strain that kind of, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly. So I think it's up for review um, in mid February to see how much longer we're going to be all stuck inside for, but I'm yeah. just trying to take it as some time to work on myself, to work on my relationships, to read lots of books. I, I agree with that. I think this time as I've really like, been self-reflective in the past year yeah. and I feel like I've come out at least I hope a better person than I was when I went into the pandemic I think it's been a year of personal growth for a lot yeah. of people yeah and and for for you it's going to be a year of followers growth because we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna like sell the shit out of your books again we love it so much I think it's great and oh, recommendations are fire and and everything is amazing on thank that you. on that page and and thank you for sharing your thoughts and opinions with us and on, on your bookstagram shop myself. Really? Thanks a lot. Yeah. Ooh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on Carrie. I really, really, and we'll talk to you soon. You have to be on again. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because now yeah. the next time I won't be as nervous. My palms are sweating. I've been so oh, nervous. Oh, no, no. You have to. You're good. You're literally great. Nothing. Yeah. You are great. You are great. And hopefully <laughs> next time we're on, he will have read more than like two books a year. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> and then we'll we'll see where he'll, where he'll be. Like, we'll probably be a different change person. You set the benchmark so high that you're like the inspiration for me. I think if I read 56 books a year, I would have a t-shirt that said I read 56 books a year. Oh, I'll make one. I'll make you, one for next time. You have to. You have to. <laughs> um, take care of yourself. Uh, give my love to your fiance and we'll see you soon. Oh, thank you so much.